Welcome back to another episode of my tutorial. I'm Brian and let's get started. In episode 7, we'll talk about editing tools. Previously, we have learned how to transform OnMesh with just the arrow tool. We were able to move vertices one by one. Now we'll learn alternative ways to select these vertices in group for transformation with the three basic tools. If you'd like to try out with the model file shown in the video, you may download this PSD file from the link posted in the comment section below. Before we move on, note that the previous episodes were recorded with an earlier version of Cubism. This episode is using the latest 4.1, with some new tools introduced, and you may notice the interface look a bit different. Remember that you can go through the whole tutorial series with just the free version of Cubism. If you prefer to get the pro version, there is a 15% discount code in the comment section below. So in this episode, the tools we'll be covering are the Lasso tool, the Soft Brush tool, and the Deform Path tool. Starting with the Lasso tool, the Lasso tool in Cubism is similar to the Lasso tool in Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint. With the object selected, click drag to start drawing a free form line. If you release your click, the start and the end of the line would automatically close up, forming a shape. And whatever is caught within the shape will be selected. The selected vertices would appear bright red. The gray ones are not selected. Click-drag any red dot to move the group of selected vertices together. Click on Empty Space to deselect. There are a few hotkeys that may come in handy. While you're selecting the vertices, holding down the Control button will show a red box. You should be familiar with this red box. You may transform it by dragging the corners, the edge, or you can even rotate the whole thing. And then there is the Shift button. If you hold down Shift, you would enter Add Mode. That means that you can further add more selected vertices into the group. Otherwise, your last selection will be gone when you select a new group. If you want to remove some of those vertices that were selected with the Lasso tool, you can hold down Ctrl Shift and then draw another shape. Within that shape, those selected vertices will turn gray, meaning that they are deselected. Moving on, the Soft Brush tool. The Soft Brush tool allows you to have an airbrush like tool to select vertices. The strength of the selection is the strongest at the center of the brush, the place where you click down and then the strength spreads out and diminishes. You can get a sense of the strength by observing the opacity of the redness on the vertices. Notice that holding down B is the key that allows you to quickly adjust the size of the brush. Simply hold down B and then click drag your mouse, you'll see the circle enlarging or shrinking. Also notice that in the Tool Detail panel, you can adjust the strength percentage of the brush, which is like adjusting how hard or soft the brush is. The default value should be 11%. I've gotten used to being around 4 to 5%. You can even change the highlight color of the vertices if you prefer. For example, if you're working on a character that is mainly red color, changing the brush color to green would make it easier to see. Just like the lasso tool, holding down Control to operate with the red box, hold down Shift to add more to the selection, and holding down Control and Shift to erase some of them. The eraser tool can do some cool tricks like this. The deform path tool allows you to create a path with flexible control points to deform the object. It is more often used for long objects, 
such as the hair, eyelash, or the lips to make different mouth forms. There are multiple options to configure a path tool. In the inspector panel, you can adjust the path width or the path hardness of the control points. The fold line option is referring to whether the path passes through the control point in a soft curve or a sharp hard angle. It may take some experience with the tool to understand what these configurations actually mean. The path tool also comes with some tool variations, as seen in the tool details. The default tool is Add Control Point, allow you to add more points on the path, or click on somewhere else to create a new path. Then, there's the opposite, Delete Control Point, which allows you to click on a point to delete them. If you want to delete a segment of the path and disconnect two points, then use the eraser tool. The sharp angle icon is the tool for toggling a control point to use the fold line mode or not. The trash can button will delete the selected deformed path entirely. Note that the transformation of the path tool is always instantly applied to the art mesh object. Therefore, deleting the path, the transformation would persist in the art mesh object for the key form. The deformed path itself can be transformed without affecting the art mesh, in case you need to adjust the control point's position. When you're using the Add tool, click dragging the control point lets you move it around without affecting the art mesh. However, holding down Ctrl and click dragging would transform the art mesh along. You can click on a path to add more points or holding down Alt to quickly switch to Delete tool instead. One path can transform multiple objects and one object can be controlled by more than one path. The path tool itself doesn't bind to any parameter. However, it binds to the art mesh object, which if the object is transformed, the path may be transformed along. It is sometimes difficult for the path to follow along with the complex transformation. Sometimes that causes the path to wander off from the intended position. You may also notice there is a deform brush tool. This tool is introduced by Cubism 4.1 and is currently in beta mode. The time when this video is recorded, it is a brand new tool so I won't be covering it for now. That's all for editing toolset. Unlike other digital design softwares like Photoshop, Maya, or Adobe Premiere, with lots of tools to learn, it doesn't take that long to go through all the ones in Cubism. In fact, you can probably complete a model with just using one selector tool. However, these selector tools are flexible and versatile allowing users to develop complex techniques to make the most out of them. Each of them has their own strengths and weaknesses in different occasions. Understanding the mechanics thoroughly, and you will discover new techniques with them, enhancing your productivity. I encourage you to not stick to just one tool that you're comfortable with, and occasionally try different tools when you build models.